All right, Christmas was a laugh, but that's done. So let's crack on with watch, listen, consume. There's so much stuff. Starting off with some banging news. Adam Johnson, Vibrolux Media have gone filming. Ho oh, oh. ho! Mate, that is really exciting stuff. Also, check out Broscow's gap in this picture, mate. Oof, that was a good era for his hair, like. I 100% tried to copy that hairstyle as well. Continuing the theme from 2021, them skates are doing something like every single week, so I'm talking about them again. This time it's the Them 80. It looks to be a whole soul frame, one piece that you can just bang on your 999. Really cool to see them expanding their offering. Like John has said, people were coming in and asking for these kind of skates, so he's delivered. Now, because Rollerbladers are a bunch of top jokers, they dug up a tweet from nine years ago of Julio saying, I don't blade for 20 plus years of my life to power blade fuck off but the joke's not quite accurate because that's not really what the tweet was actually about power slide had decided to put like really big wheels on aggressive skates and try and rebrand it try and bring the focus to themselves and call it power blading we already have enough arguments with like different terms meaning the same thing introducing another name <laughs> oh it's just more hassle and as for like the term power blading whatever spring 2022 them skates 80s i kind of hope the next move for them is introducing kids skates sticking with them skates they've also teased up a new buckle they've also teamed up with parker richardson on a couple of clothing bits you've got the pendulum tee so it has them skates written in like almost like tree roots with the pendulum on there very kind of like 80s i used to smash those things to pieces every time i see one there's also one called creatures got a couple of animals on there spells out of them and it comes in this really nice light green almost like vintagey feel to it. I'm lovely and green, yeah. I'd like to talk about a GoFundMe set up for baby Basil Anthony. On December 5th, Chad and Catherine Anthony welcomed their beautiful baby Basil to the world. Tragically, Catherine passed away in hospital due to complications. This has turned Chad's world upside down. It's completely devastating news. If you can support in any way, it would be greatly appreciated. I'll link the details down below. Crate Originals have dropped the Mark Marino Ballista Sticker Sheet Graphic Pro Frame Limited Edition. So you can pretty much pick any colour frame that you like. You get two sticker sheets, one matte, one glossy, all designed by Mark himself. You've got a cigarette packet with a bit of pasta in there. Really sick, man, an interesting take on things. Crate are also offering some decent royalties as well. So if you're buying from a shop, Mark gets like $5. If you buy them direct from Crate, he gets $10, man. Nice one, this is the way forward. Couple of new mid-season signings. Mystic McNamara has seen a couple of his predictions come true. Got James Cobrin, Jimmy Cobrin, and Dennis Lopez signing up to the Mesmer AM team. Good work, top signings tonight. Mesmer continues to be really exciting. Also, that beanie that uh, Dennis is wearing, is that gonna be released? Is that official? Because I am keen as Colonel Mustard to get my hands on that, man. Looks nice. Tiny Woodland has secured himself a spot on the Rollerblades professional team. The first black pro skater from TN, National Tennessee. Tree Rollerwear have also announced their first team rider, and they are starting off with a pretty good one. Levy Van Rain, bloody hell, there's a way to start your team, man. Yeah, I'm thinking about putting a five-a-side team together. Got one player already, Messi. <laughs> He's got an edit on the way, which I'm pretty friggin' excited about. I mean, the section in Plastic Pushers 2 was definitely one of the sections of the year last year. I imagine this is going to be absolutely banging. Pat Ridder and Edo Goods have got together on a couple of bits. This is really cool, man. The trousers are tailor-made using one roll of cotton ripstop workwear fabric, stitched with ultra-strong thread, extremely durable, extremely oversized, and extremely limited to the point where they're actually already sold out. But I thought I'd tell you about it anyway. Really cool seeing some craftsmanship going into rollerblading cover and like companies actually working with the riders to get the perfect fit. It looks like the t-shirts are still available so try and get one of them while you can. Plastic Pushers have dropped some new merch, got some great big bold designs in there and they're all printed by the goth otter himself, Kevin. Skate our own, don't run. Bonus points. Learn the Economy also had a couple of bits up for pre-order. You've got the really nice clean and simple E and you got some bloke screaming economy. Economy! Bleh. Feel like the clothing options and rollerblading are actually getting better and better. Parallel Collective have also dropped a limited tie-dye beanie. Looks proper smart, man. 
you can just get yourself completely hooked up. You've got like trousers, t-shirts, hoodies, and a beanie kitted out. It also looks like a Russian boy wonder. Ilya Savasin is getting a new pro wheel as well from Caltic. Uh, Royces, give him a skate. Just give him a skate, man. On the 1st of February, Wizard Bladen are leveling up. It also looks like Faction Skate Company are about to release a skate. Hit it wet again. Hit it lit again. Do you remember simulators? Those like little cinemas that would move around with the actual film that playing, so they'd always play something like a motorcyclist and you'd be like all over the place. That's what the beginning of Hit It Wet Again is like. Taylor is a man committed to getting you those angles. He goes life and death for you. Freaking out. He wants that shot, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna risk it all, man. I'm I'm committed, I'm in. One absolute sicko. Hit it wet again is just brilliant. The pace of it's really good, it's so exciting, definitely a lot of moments you're like, whoa! Flip it, hell man. Full of great skaters, great skills on show. Highly recommend it, get involved. Michael Witzerman, 21 gun salute, red eye wheels, top banana. He has such a like effortless style. Really great skater. He can make just the simplest tricks look so good and really appealing. Also really creative, technical as well doing kind of new ways, new school stuff, mixing it up really brilliantly. Mate, top rated, get onto this one. Haunted Wheels presents Detroit 9000. Now I assume the title is inspired by the 1973 film. Man, this video goes off. Everybody gets well and truly stuck in. Matt and Brad Oz had filmed the thing, stars them, also Luke Naylor, Ed Gilly, Brian Wise, Coda Holt, who else? Justice Pope. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anybody in there. Man, absolute ripper, man. Great soundtrack as well. Really enjoyed it, man. 30 minutes as well. Decent length. Oigen ended 2021 with two tactical releases. I know what your game is, mate. You complete rascal. Sneaking them in at the end of the year. So they're fresh in everybody's mind when it comes to Blader of the Year and Section of the Year. Very clever. Although that's gone a little bit sideways because uh, I don't think people realise they had to actually nominate the videos they like. I think people were just waiting for that to be listed there and then to go, yep, yeah, that's the one I'm picking. Either way, it doesn't take anything away from like the videos, proper standard Oigan stuff, in it. Creative, really precise skating, very touchy-feely, very hands-on with this one, treating like obstacles like their Tinder dates. I mean, you can't keep his hands off them. Likes to touch a pole. <laughs> <coughs> Definitely the title is inspired by that free running film from 10 years ago, Concrete Circus, which starred uh, Matthew Ladeau. Similar kind of style of skating actually, and similar kind of style of fit with that like, headband thing that he likes to wear. Also seems to be nods to previous shadow skaters like Latimer and Yee. Hey, it's a bloody interesting one and it seems that everybody absolutely loved it. Yo Zenk had a very productive year, finishing it off with Campion Suave, it's him, Harry Can, Sasha Lopez, Bold Dirty Bastard Vladimir is in there as well, you've got Pardo, you've got Carlos Bernal, and a few other people, sorry, forgetting the names. Man, really good one, filmed in Barcelona in September, like a spontaneous trip down there. Man, just consistently good skating, creative, and it's like, it's really cool to see like Yo go for that big output, man. Like always producing stuff, always working on stuff, building a really big catalog of the year. Great work ethic. Four years after the original podcast with John Julio, he's back on again with the Mushroom Blading Boys on how to be unpopular. Man, this is such a good one. Really cool getting some insights from the prayers. They talk everything about them, about the influence and power that like Mushroom Blading had at, right at the beginning of them. He talks about the collaborations with Brain Dead, meeting random people who are like talking about them skates and how the visibility of it seems to be growing. His ideas for like moving it forward. Really great man. Julio is a voice of rollerblading, as he was a Mushroom Blading guys. Great stuff. Rollerblading's favourite chuckle brother impersonator, Bobby Spazoff, was also up on the How To Be Unpopular podcast. He talks everything from sobriety, going to prison, his approach to skating now, designing his pro skate, and a lot of other stuff. Get involved in that one. Todd was actually up on uh, Jan's podcast as well, then and now they talk everything from like 
early years playing baseball and how people really thought he had a future in that but sacking it off for rollerblading talking about things like senate grind plates top five skaters of all time top five videos of all time vancouver his sobriety all that really good stuff really interesting bloke definitely get a listen in on this one talking to senate brooke howard smith was up on the jump street podcast i'm pretty sure he was trying to sell people timeshares in lanzarote arlo made a guest appearance as well so obviously they talk about senate all the glory days and really good stuff like that. Jump Street also had on Rollerblading's fourth greatest rapper. That's after Yuck Yuckum, Dre Powell, Julian Barr, Kevon Thompson. He talks about everything from the situation with Blade the Union now and how he's taken over that channel, his like early years in rollerblading, meeting Greg, all that kind of good stuff. He talks about representation in rollerblading. Another really interesting one, man. Make sure you go and check it out. And I reckon that just about wraps it up, man. Fair few things going on. Looks like we're gonna have a good 2022. There's a couple of other videos you can check out from myself. Otherwise, spotty dog.